Okay, you might figure that one of the hardest things to do is one of the simplest, it looks like. But putting these bolts in has been a royal pain. The one that's underneath the, um, the, the water, your uh, washer fluid, yes, I did take it apart, be able to move it off to the side. Okay, made it much easier. And uh, to get the uh, screw back inside there, even with this thing off, you might think of this. That's the screw. So that's the bolt inside the socket with a little tape around it to hold it. That way you can kind of get in and may make it a little easier. Okay, then of course as you twist, then the tape is just going to pull away from the tape. So no big deal. You can take it off or if it, come, you know, if it comes off by itself. But uh, anyway, uh, keep that in mind and uh, maybe that will help you out. Okay, we now kind of come to the point of... Uh, going over a couple of things here and one of them is the fuse. You could have blown a fuse if you had a bad motor, if it was grounded or whatever, so you want to try and find that fuse. You'll take off the cover. Now mine is, you see the fuse box right back here. Okay, and then you'll have to take a look at this, which you're not going to be able to read. But anyway, it says we've got a, a 30, a 50, and a 30. And this says pump, like air pump or something. So you want to check that. You may have to uh, replace it, who knows. Anyway, you need to do that. And in order to clear the code so that you won't have the uh, engine light come on anymore, you're going to need to disconnect the battery terminals. Okay, just do them both and leave it off for a few minutes. It should only take a few seconds, but just leave it off for a few minutes and uh, put them back on and go from there. Alrighty then, we are back together and things are still kind of loosened up and everything, but I uh, just figured I'd better go over how this all took place. And you may want to check your air filter while well, you got that apart. This is a Toyota Tacoma, and it is a 2.7 liter, four cylinder. So you'll have to find out which, ah, oh, nuts, my battery's running down. Hang on. Okay, anyway, 2006 Toyota Tacoma, four cylinder engine. <coughs> Basically, the way that it started out was the, I was at a light, the engine stumbled, didn't have to restart it or anything, it just kind of stumbled, and I was on my way to get gas. Pretty soon, I noticed the daggone engine lights on. Well, is it the gas cap? So I did all that routine and, and disconnected the battery and all to reset it. And uh, when I hooked it back up, started running around, I drove it for, I don't know, for a while, and then I would come home to park it. And when I put it in park, on comes the engine light. So it starts out. Uh, started out that way. Uh, I took it to, uh, was going to take it to one of these local places and have them do the diagnostics, but uh, one of these national brands wanted like 90 bucks just for the diagnostic. Well, hell, you can buy the tool to diagnose it yourself and have it for the rest of your life. Anyway, I uh, called up Toyota and they said, yeah, it's free. I said, free? Like, free? And they said, yeah. I said, okay. And uh, of course, up comes the old dreaded, uh, let's see, it's a P0418 and a P2445 secondary air injection system pump checked off bank one, whatever that means. Recommend replace air pump and diverter valve. Cost of, and that's when I had to be woken up. Anyway, uh, so I checked the fuse. I mean, before I was going kind of backwards uh, because I was making this video before. Uh, or after I started working on it. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. It's hot out here. So anyway, yeah, of course you'd want to check the fuse first, okay, and make sure that, you know, uh, that didn't blow for some reason, which would cause this thing not to operate. The other thing you can do, down here where the air supply is, you can feel it blowing air. Our pipe here on the pump, you can feel it blowing air. You can also, if you don't feel the blowing air, you can take this apart, this clip apart, and just run your set of jumpers from the battery over to the plug. Now you're going to need some small uh, alligator clips or whatever because it's kind of tight in there and those uh, terminals are rather small. So that way you've got a direct link from the battery to the pump. If it doesn't run, then you know you got a problem. Okay, because there's other things that make this thing turn on and off. Like, uh, I believe it just, it only, it's only in the system for like a few seconds, maybe half a minute or whatever, that this thing is in uh, in use. And I think it's whatever, like a, like a startup maybe. 
Okay, then of course you get the same thing back here, our diverter solenoid valve. You can, when you take off that hose, look inside there and you can see the valve actuating. If you wanted to, you could probably stick your finger in there because all there is is just a, uh, on this particular one, okay, I'm not advising it, <laughs> get your finger cut off, <laughs> your loss, not mine. Um, anyway, you'll see it uh, going up and down when it's actuated. So again, that's 12 volts, so you can just run that same jumper back over to here to the, um, to the solenoid valve and check it. You can probably hear it as we did a little earlier when uh, we had it apart. <clears throat> And also, if you wanted to, you can look in here and see what might be in it. You can. This is the uh, exhaust which blows through the tube that goes into the diverter. And if you look inside here, you can see the teeth uh, of the blade. I guess that's what we would call it, or uh, impeller rather. And you can probably, uh, you know, look inside there and see if you see it all gummed up. Now, from what I understand, this is going to, from what I've seen anyway, this is probably the easiest one to do. Some of the six, I guess the six cylinders and eight cylinders have got two sets of each. One goes to each side. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, that right now is about it. I would definitely check it out before you start pulling these parts apart. Okay, I knew this uh, motor wasn't running and I was hoping it was just something that was jammed in there. And that, um, but it wasn't. It was the, the motor lead or whatever broke in there and I was able to repair it as you saw and so far so good now uh, I've got things kind of apart yet because I'm still going to test it here in just a minute and then I'll drive this guy around for a while and see what happens and get back with you uh, I'm sure there's some other stuff I've forgotten but uh, I never did see one of this particular engine like this to see where everything went and like I say this is not really too bad now, if you got a six or an eight, you, you know, you got a problem and a lot, lot more money. So, we'll be back shortly.